Okay, in this video we are going to evaluate a line integral um, by applying the fundamental theorem of line integrals. And so it's kind of a typical question. So we want to show that it's a valid method and then apply the fundamental theorem of line integrals to the line integral given f, our vector field, is 2xy, um, x squared minus z squared, and then negative 2yz. And C, the path is any path going from uh, 0, 0, 0 to the origin to the point 3, 2, 5. And almost any problem that's like this, uh, you can kind of rest assured is going to be a fundamental theorem of line integrals type problem because uh, they didn't specify a path. So let's see if we can do it. First question we need to answer is, is it a valid method? So um, that's kind of equivalent to just asking, uh, is the vector field conservative? Because if it's conservative, then we can find a potential function and then we can use the fundamental theorem. So let's figure out if it's conservative. To do that, I like to calculate the curl. We're just like a really convenient way of remembering how to do these things. Um, so it's gonna be uh, a cross product. First row is i, j, and k. Second row is uh, the partial derivative. So partial x, partial y, and partial z. And then the third row is our vector field. So 2xy, x squared minus z squared, and then negative 2yz. So I need to evaluate this. So if you remember when you're dealing with cross products, it's you cross, you, you uh, I don't know, like cover up the, the row and column, and then you do a two by two determinant. So we're gonna find the i component. So I'm gonna cross out the first row, first column, and now I need to do a two by two determinant. So the first thing I do, is I find partial y of this. So partial y of negative 2yz is just negative 2z. Now I need to find partial z of um, this. And the derivative with respect to z of this is negative 2z. So I have negative 2z minus negative 2z, which is gonna simplify to zero, and that's the i component. So, so far so good. Uh, don't forget, it's minus j. So it's gonna be minus parentheses, Crossing out the row and the column, I need partial x of this, um, but partial x of negative 2yz, there's no x's, so that's just a constant, so it's gonna be zero. I need partial z of um, 2xy, um, but again, there's no z in there, so that's just gonna be zero. And that's our j component. And now I need uh, the k component, so it's gonna be plus, cross out the first row, the last column, I need partial x of this, which is gonna be 2x, minus partial y of 2xy, which is going to be 2x, and that's our k component. And so overall, we get 0, 0, 0, the zero vector, which means our curl is zero, and therefore uh, our vector field is conservative. If it's conservative, it means it's worth my while to try to find a potential function. So let's see if we can do that. To do that, we look at our vector field and we realize that it should be the gradient of the potential function, which means first component is partial x, second is partial y, and third is partial z. So the way that I'm gonna try to like recover our potential function from this is I'm gonna do three separate integrals and then just compare what I get. So first, I'm gonna integrate partial x with respect to x. And so that's gonna give me, um, the integral of two x is x squared, so I get x squared y. And then there's there could be just some function of y, some function of z, or a function of y and z, that when I took the derivative with respect to x, just went away. So my constant for this thing, I'm gonna call it g1, and it could be a function of y and z. Now let's do um, the same basic thing to partial y. So uh, I'm gonna find the integral of x squared minus z squared with respect to y, which is a pretty straightforward thing because uh, it's like x squared is just a constant, so I get x squared y, and then negative z squared is just a constant, so I get minus uh, y times z squared. Same deal here though. Could have been something that just had x, could have been something that just had z, could have been something that had x and z. So I need to add another kind of constant of integration, but it's actually a function. And we're gonna do it again. So deal with the last component here. If I integrate this, 
I get, um, so negative two y is a constant, I get one half z squared, so overall I get um, negative y z squared. There could have been a function of x, could have been a function of y, could have been a function of x and y, so we add another function here. So we have that. And now it's kind of like comparisons, right? So um, if I look, I see that there's an x squared y shows up twice, so I want to count everything that shows up, I have to count at least one, at just once rather, not at least. So x squared y, I also see a, so also, I mean, it's worth noting, the x squared y that I just wrote, if you look at g3 there, that was some unknown function of x and y, or x or y, I just found g3, like I, I dealt with that. Now if I look at the next thing, I see minus y z squared, so I'm going to count that, if you look at g1, that was some unknown function of y or z or y and z. I just found that. And then um, g2 was a function of x or z or x and z, but it just didn't show up anywhere. So there actually wasn't a function that just had those variables. So we found our function. So we wanted to evaluate our line integral. And fundamental theorem says if we can show that f is the gradient of something, so really we're doing this, then all we need to do is evaluate the potential function at the end point and at the starting point and subtract, just like fundamental theorem of calculus. So there's our start, there's our end. So we're going to get f of the ending point, so 325, minus f of the starting point, 0, 0, 0. Let's substitute in. So we end up with this. And then when you plug in 0, 0, 0, you actually just get 0. So overall, the line integral gives us negative 32. You could actually, um, this one's pretty easy. If you just make like a, treat it as a line segment, you could evaluate the line integral um, in, in a more direct way and see that you also get negative 32, which is always reassuring when you're first doing these sorts of things. Uh, but anyway, that's a good example of showing a vector field is conservative, finding the potential function, and then using the fundamental theorem of line integrals on it. So I hope you found this helpful and good luck.